Hello everyone, this is The Final Bossman. On this week's episode, I have some more Microsoft President business to take care of, and then I'm gonna get a little salty. Let's get started. Welcome to the show, I am Kyle Bossman, of course. Uh, this week is, I suppose, the debut of the Santa Monica backdrop. Uh, Santa Monica, by the way, is, is where Game Trailers is, is centrally located. Uh, so I'm sort of trying to rep it, represent. Santa Monica. Last week's show was about Don Matrick and his big move from president of interactive entertainment business at Microsoft to uh, CEO of Zynga and that, that, that uh, Steve Ballmer would, would take his place. And then uh, Microsoft is just making this weird habit of, of making big news in between episodes of this show because uh, the day after we went live they announced their whole Microsoft reorganization and, and part of that is that Julie Larson Green was announced as Don Matrick's successor. Uh, Julie Larson Green is replacing Don Matrick not as president of Interactive Entertainment Business. Instead, she is leading a new division called Devices and Studios Engineering Group. <laughs> and, and the Xbox just kind of fits underneath that whole umbrella. This might be a bad thing. <laughs> this might grow to be a bad thing. We should, we should withhold judgment for now. You see, Matrick's old title, uh, uh, President of Interactive Entertainment Business, basically he, he was president of Xbox, and, and that's what he was responsible for, and that's what he was good at. He, he grew up making games, and he, he got rich selling games. Julie Larson Green, uh, she has not led a, a games division in her entire life. In fact, this new uh, position is not entirely meant to be uh, leading a games group. Uh, here's a fun quote from the, the memo that Steve Ballmer put out when uh, the announcement was made. As devices proliferate, it has become clearer that consumers crave one experience across all of their technology. Yet today, they often face different experiences on their PC as compared to their phone or their tablet. As technology moves from people's desks to everywhere in their lives, it should become simpler, not more complex and our products and services should operate as one experience across every device. Xbox One, coming this year. Buy one, please. Simply put, we've lost our, our president of Xbox and gained one president of devices and studios engineering group. Uh, and, and the Xbox is part of that thing. Uh, which to me raises the question, how important is it that a games leader likes video games? And my first impulse is to say, yes, that person, that person should care a lot. <laughs> if, you're, if you're in the business of, of selling video games, you should care a ton. But also, I don't know, there are, there's a CEO of Pizza Hut. How much should that person love eating pizza? Uh, you know, you shouldn't be necessarily part of the job. Maybe it's like, it's like, you know, when you want a lawyer, you kind of want a real a-hole. Maybe CEO is the same way. You just want someone who's going to fight, you know, not necessarily someone who just uh, loves video games. I think there's still a perception that they shouldn't be playing video games, that you should, you're too busy to be playing video games. Why are you, you're a professional business person. Don't play video games. And it's kind of like how we're like, when we're surprised when a celebrity plays video games. Like, oh, Michelle Rodriguez plays Need for Speed? That's nice. Or Snoop is in a video game? Bless us. Though actually, I should admit, I'm, I'm a hypocrite. I thought it was pretty great when Matthew Perry said that he likes Klonoa because that's just classy. Anyway, there is a stigma. There's a stigma that we should all acknowledge that, that video games are generally accepted as a sort of waste of time. You hear it when you hear someone say, oh, I wish I could play video games. I wish I had the time for that. Because you can tell they're like, that person is a little proud of that. Oh, I, w I wish I had time to be as lazy as you are. I wish, but I have so many things to do. Oh. Oh, I wish I could not care about all the important things that I have to do that are all better than the things that you do. Mario Kart 64 is still the best though, right? No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not, but, but uh, CEOs, presidents, vice presidents, chair people, it's not actually that important for them to enjoy video games because that's not necessarily their jobs. These people, their jobs is to facilitate 
the games, to, to make sure that the, the creative minds, the people who make the games we love, uh, keep making those games. All I'm saying is, maybe it does make your company more likable when your CEO and your leaders like video games. Consider Satoru Iwata, CEO of Nintendo. Uh, this is a person who also grew up uh, making games uh, and, and just does Iwata asks. This person takes time out to, to uh, do interviews with game developers from a perspective of someone who cares about their answers. Oh, I wish I had time to interview my developers. This person is a CEO. <laughs> that guy's a CEO of Nintendo. Yeah, I think he's pretty busy. And, but he does choose to take out some of his time to do these interviews, and I appreciate that. It makes his company more likable. I, I like when Shuhei Yoshida, president of Sony Worldwide Studios, will do a tweet about a Vita game that nobody cares about, just to give it some attention, a little spotlight on that game. It, it, it makes your corporation uh, somehow more human, more likable when your leaders like video games. And I, I just think that maybe Larry Herb isn't enough. So this weekend, this past weekend, another thing I was doing, I was watching a lot of EVO. Uh, EVO, for those who don't know, is the world's largest fighting games tournament. It's international, it's like the Olympics. The weird thing about EVO is that I, I love EVO and I am bad at fighting games. I'm so bad at fighting games. And it's not like a thing where it's just, it's like, Oh, I wish I was good at fighting games, but I don't have time. It's like, I don't, I don't have the soul to be good at fighting games. I don't have the, the, the spirit. Fighting games in particular, I think, have the largest barrier of entry uh, of any video game genre. It's harder than Surgeon Simulator. As we've seen lots of other video games become easier and broader, uh, fighting games are something that have, have really kept their technical difficulty over the years. And that is something that is a good thing, and it's good that those games are hard. Because when you look at the fighting game community, you know that every person in there is dedicated. Each person has put his or her time in, and, and it's like guitar. It's like you can't do anything impressive until you, you put in hundreds of hours. And that's just something that makes it so interesting. When you're watching a pro play a fighting game, it's so far different from the way that you play it. As, as opposed to like, I think when you're watching the best Call of Duty player in the world, it still looks pretty much the same as when your little cousin is playing it. Just, oh, he got the headshot, whereas I wouldn't have. A very interesting thing popped up. Seth Killian was, was announcing the Super Street Fighter 4 finals. And uh, it was the first part of the first match of the top eight, uh, Daigo was facing uh, infiltration. Daigo Umahara, uh, for those who don't know, is a, a Japanese player who used to be very dominant. He isn't as dominant anymore. I mean, he still gets to top eight the world, uh, but he used to, you know, he used to just win constantly. Now he says he doesn't fear losing anymore. That part isn't important to him. He played in the tournament as Ryu, and Ryu is no longer a, a very great character for Super Street Fighter 4, and he admits that. He says, if I wanted to win, I, I would choose another character, but what I want to do is express myself through Ryu. And I just thought that is, that is the most beautiful thing I've ever heard any pro video game player say. That is, he wants to express himself through that character. That is incredible. By the way, what's funny is Daigo's job, or, or at least what his day job used to be, I'm not sure what he does now, somebody needs to translate his book, uh, he used to be a nurse. Daigo used to be a nurse at a nursing home taking care of old people, and he just did it because he found that rewarding. Oh, I wish I had the time to be a nurse at a nursing home. That was, that was at the, the height of his career. He was being a nurse at a nursing home. And so the conclusion I'm trying to draw here is that, yeah, you can say, oh, I don't have time to play video games, but it's gonna come across like you just don't care enough. And I know, I know there are lots of people who work 18 hours a day, seven days a week, and legitimately cannot play video games. Uh, you, you don't have to write that comment. I understand your life is hard. What I'm saying is that, that video games require a certain dedication, and if you don't have that dedication, that's okay, that's fine, but please don't ever frown upon the people who do have that dedication. Uh, and that is the episode for this week. Uh, if you have an opinion about the CEO thing, whether, whether a CEO should care about video games or not. I'm curious about it because I think I may have come to the wrong conclusion there. Also, I'm curious, I want your feedback about this episode in particular because I didn't have a segment this week, you know, I wasn't counting down anything. Kind of just a, a long video essay. 
in a way. So I want to know if you think that was okay or if you think I should stop doing that forever. If you're on Twitter, you can find me at Kyle Bossman. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next week. So long. See all of our shows and game reviews now on the brand new GT app on Xbox Live and the GT Originals iOS app too. Hey, pretty girl with their pretty eyelids. I want you to go to an island with me. You will catch fish in the sea. Wow, boys, that was fun. I'm quitting the band. What? Dad, you can't quit the band. You just joined it. You just sang one song. Yeah, but I found a better replacement already. Do you remember the daughter of my best friend from high school? Kinda. Well, here she is. Hi, I'm in your band now. Oh. Okay. I'm your lead singer. Uh, sh sure. All right. Do you play songs about seasons? You mean like summer and winter? Yeah those things. No, we don't normally sing songs about seasons. Well, we're about to start. Give me a beat. This song is called Summer's Blessings of Summertime. Of June and July, when the bubbles rise. I chose you. I took your hand under the sun. We made plans to make love. Guys, stop it. Everyone stop. Stop the song. Stop it. I have something to say. We're totally going to win Battle of Bands. Yay! Yay!